Hey guys, how's it going? Our house 21 here. So, this is one of those things that started off at one thing and ended up something else. So, I actually started off filming a video here talking about how I was getting these nice new atomic aluminum shocks ready for install in the cars, and somehow ended up taking a left turn and doing a whole the whole discussion about aluminum and aluminum metallurgy and what makes aluminum parts strong and you know the good things about aluminum parts and the bad things about aluminum parts so i'm instead of trying to recreate the video i'm just going to go ahead and splice that chunk that i filmed in the wrong video and go ahead into this thing so i figure it was it was a good look. I figured it was a lot of good information, but it deserved its own video. So I'm just going to go ahead and take all that footage out of the shock install video and just put it in its own thing right here. So stay tuned after the cut and you'll see me going off into one of my tangents, but basically explaining a lot about what goes into aluminum RC parts and what you should look out for and what you should look for. Because like I said, there's a lot in here. and. Just because something says it's aluminum does not mean that it's quality. There's a lot of stuff or a lot of things that you need to know before you decide to buy any of this material uh, or just any material. Do your research. There are several companies out there who are making high quality aluminum, but there's some guys out there that are not. And if you choose the bad stuff, you're, you're not gonna have a good day and you're just gonna end up buying something else again. All right, guys, so. Here's the splice. All right, so what's the big deal about aluminum parts anyway? So the big thing about aluminum parts is that they're inherently stronger than plastic parts. And that's kind of a given, but there are some things to keep in mind and things to be concerned about with aluminum also. I mean, one of the big things is that there's actually two different types of aluminum parts you'll see out there. You know, and I just hold examples in my hand right here. This right here, the, these two are some of the nice atomic machine billet aluminum, okay? So these pieces actually get machined from a solid block of aluminum that comes from the foundry and it's basically one big aluminum crystal. It's pretty cool stuff. Stuff like this, these are aluminum castings or this is an aluminum casting. And this and this have two completely different microstructures. And I'll talk about that in just a second and why you really want to go with something like this, especially for something that's going to be a high stress, um, high, um, for high stress, high load type of environment. So, but first off, I talked about something interesting. I said, these are crystals or these have crystalline structure. Now what that means, I mean, a lot of guys don't realize that aluminum or I should say all metals now, they, metals tend to have two different types of microstructures. There's ductile metals, and that's um, metals that you can pull, and you can uh, basically turn into something that stretches, so you can make wire out of it, make springs out of it. You know, they're metals that can be deformed a lot and they return to their normal shape. Then there are crystalline metals. Now, crystalline metal, you know, as the name implies, is like a crystal. Now, if you think about this logically, can you stretch a crystal? Can you bend a crystal? No, you can't. Crystals are very, very rigid, they're very hard. And the reason is, I'm just gonna go ahead and use this as an example. Now, this is actually a, a section of one of the prototypes I use for the Innovation RC um, ducted fans. Um, so I, I stopped it early just to do a, 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 basically a strength test. But if you look inside of here, you've got this regular pattern that's used in material. For 3D printing, you call that infill. But for the sake of this discussion, you can think about this as being a crystalline structure, which basically is what it is. So inside, you have the material that's linked into this, basically this framework that is super duper strong and it helps to provide a structure inside the material. The downside about this is that if any of this framework crystals crack or if they get deformed, the whole material has lost its strength. So, and that's actually one of the downsides about crystalline materials. So with a ductile material, um, that's something like this, like wire. And you see like here you have this very thin wire and over here I've got very, very thick wire. Now in this case, 
you can see that the thick wire still bends and it still flexes and I can make it move in all sorts of ways. And it does have some strength. If you ever try playing around with large, uh, large core uh, low gauge wire like 8 gauge, 6 gauge, 0 gauge wire, some of this stuff is really, really, really pretty rigid. However, you can still bend it. That's because at the microscopic level, the atoms inside the inside the alloy are just kind of balled up just like a string. And they're just kind of balled on top of each other and I can pull them apart and I can pull them back together and they're not gonna break because they're all just kind of like bound up together. Now if I put a lot of them together and I kind of squeeze them in a certain way, I can make them fairly strong, but they're still gonna bend around because there's no inherent microstructure that's holding everything together. So for these billet parts, the metal is made to effectively make them into huge crystals and then you use tools to remove material and you end up with these large crystalline structures that like I said have their internal internal uh, lattice work that just help to keep these guys strong. For stuff like this, this is aluminum casting. A lot of times people call this stuff pot metal. And the reason why is because in a lot of places where they make this stuff, they just take scrap metal and they just throw it into a big pot and they melt it down and it's not very well controlled, it's not very consistent. So you really don't know what this stuff is half the time. But they take this metal and they put it into a mold. Or I should say, they um, they take a piece of wax or a piece of plastic that's made in the shape that they want. They then put that inside of a bed of really fine grade sand, pour liquid metal, some molten aluminum in this case, into the mold and it goes into the right shape. Now it is actually possible to take and treat castings and turn them into a crystalline microstructure, but the people who make stuff like this, they don't do that. So if you look at this part right here, you can actually see that on the bottom of this piece, you have this deflection here because this thing was wrecked. Now, someone actually gave this to me as a, as a part of a bin of parts. The, the problem with things like this is you can see that it was this un, this was probably wrecked and this was part of a shock tower for a wrestler and it was bent significantly and like I said the thing about aluminum I mean, the fact that this was bent tells you that this wasn't crystalline or wasn't billet um, because for parts like with a crystalline microstructure like this, when they get bent, they break. So if you look here, you can see that in this structure, there's little line gaps. And that's because I printed this in a in really rough uh, draft mode. So it's not a perfect print, but it serves, uh, serves an example. Because if you can just imagine if this was a beam that was under stress, like if this was being bent and a crack formed inside of here, then this is a weak point. So the crack will then grow from this point and rip itself apart. So if you had two pieces that were together like this, they would just come apart right through the crack. And that's the thing about crystalline structures. A crystalline aluminum does the exact same thing. So if this metal was a crystalline structure and it was overstressed, it would just snap, you know? So the fact that it has been bent and you can move it back into position you know, shows that A, it doesn't have the right microstructure that you're looking for, but B, it does still accumulate micro cracks inside of it because, you know, it, it, it does. So this part, after it's been bent, is now significantly weaker than it was before. So if you have an aluminum part, especially with like a billet part, and you get it bent, and, you're, and you try very hard to bend it back in place, and you get it kind of in its original position, it's, it's still junk because there are micro cracks inside of here now that compromise it. So as soon as it gets a very high load again in the same places, those cracks are going to grow and it's just going to break. Now it is possible to design billet aluminum parts or, or aluminum parts with a crystalline structure so that they bend, and uh, but they are precisely engineered to bend just enough but not too much to cause cracks. And if you ever look at videos of airplane wings when they fly, a lot of aluminum aircraft wings can bend several feet at the end of the wing, and it's perfectly fine. Because they're designed to do that. So they're able to return to their original shape after being stressed. And that's really one of the big telltale signs. If you have an aluminum part 
and it doesn't return back to its original shape after you put it through a stress or put it through some abuse, it's compromised and it's going to fail now. So just keep that in mind. Now, another important thing to understand, we take aluminum parts and put them into your RC, is the fact that you're now going to be transmitting more forces further up into your system. And sometimes you don't want to do that. So you want to think about carefully what you've built. Like, for example, here, I'm going to put on this and pick up. This is a bulkhead for slash uh, LCG 4x4. So if you built this guy using one of these suspension arms, and you put it together like here. So now, typically, with these cars, you have plastic in both places. So if you have a wreck, just like recently the one that I had with my son's car, Scar, you know, where you hit something on the outer wheel and it pulls back, the forces hit the wheel, it pulls back, and it actually ripped the uh, pin through the side of the, uh, of the bulkhead here. Now, if this was aluminum, and that was aluminum, the aluminum part would have taken on a load that would have transmitted right here through into the bulkhead. That would have taken a load too, but all those forces still have to go somewhere. So if that was too hard a hit, instead of breaking at the A-arm or breaking at the bulkhead, it would break at, you know, somewhere up into the chassis. Now, that might be what you want, but that might not be what you want. So you, so sometimes guys might, let's say, use the aluminum a arm but keep a plastic bulkhead or they might keep the aluminum bulkhead and use plastic a arms you know so that they design in something that will break so that um, they don't end up breaking something else up in their system that is a little bit more complicated to fix so again just things to keep in mind as you build your setup i'm going full aluminum on the suspension and that's mainly to try to eliminate some of the slop um, and basically make a very stiff suspension system so the only motion that I get from the suspension is going to be coming through the joints and being controlled by my shocks. All right, so thanks for indulging me on that little tangent. Our household one signing out. Remember the mantra, fly, fix, fly, break it, fix it, and do it all over again. And if you want to hear me go off on other random tangents, don't forget to check me out on Facebook, Instagram, and all the social media out there. And don't forget to check me out also on Facebook, uh, the RC Physics Sandbox, along with the uh, Venom RC Lifestyle page. Um, both of those are places where uh, you can go and find other people who are just into RC, doing it all sorts of different takes. The Venom Lifestyle page is a broader group, and you've got uh, Venom team members and just community members posting all the crazy stuff that they're doing in, in the hobby. Uh, and the RC Physics Sandbox is a, kind of a smaller community where you have guys who are really technically minded trading ideas and information about you know rc in general all right guys our also we want to sign out remember our mantra fly fix fly break it fix it and do it all over again stay tuned lots of cool content coming up including me actually installing all of this aluminum here it's going to be some good stuff all right guys our house 21 signing out peace